Network Dojo. This topic right here, AP uh, controller discoveries and joins, is one of the most common pieces of troubleshooting that you'll need to do. You will always, no matter what, have to join APs to controller, and I would say 99% of the time, something will go wrong somewhere during this process, and you're going to need to find it and fix it. So if it's that big of uh, a guarantee, pretty much, um, you're going to want to make sure that you're good at this because what are the ramifications if you're not good at this? Um, so worst case, your APs aren't joining at all, and I don't know how you pass. You know, if, if you have a, like a controller that won't allow APs to join to it, you will lose so many points that I don't think that there's any way to get over that. That's worst case. Now, you know, what if it takes you, you know, 25 minutes to get your APs joined? That's a lot of wasted time that you're going to run into there early on in the lab. So it's like you're already dug yourself a big hole that you need to get out of here. Now, conversely, what if you're really good at this? You find and fix that error within a couple of minutes. You're off and on your way and, you know, you're, you, have, you don't lose any momentum going on. Um, and that's what you want for sure. So. <clears throat> Let's talk about uh, the process here. So remember, um, APs, they first, uh, sort of really the order of operations, they, they boot, they pull an IP address pretty much exclusively through DHCP. They then try to do discovery. Discovery, they use all the different methods possible, send out discovery requests, hopefully get discovery responses from their controllers. They build a list and put that in a priori prioritized order. Then we move to the join phase. So join doesn't start until all of the discovery methods have been attempted. Once we have our list, we move to join phase, pick the first controller on the list, attempt to join that. If we're unable to, eventually we give up, move to the next most preferred controller on the list, and so on down the line until we've either joined a controller or we give up. Usually we release our IP address and we start the whole process all over again. So. As we try to figure out why our AP is not joining a controller, what we want to first figure out is, is the problem with discovering the controller or is the problem with joining the controller? Because if we can re immediately realize, oh, it's trying to join the controller, we can continue, you know, completely eliminate all of that discovery troubleshooting and just focus on the join process. Whereas if we don't ever see it attempting to join a controller, you know, it's kind of all on the table here. So we gotta worry about discovery and then potentially there might be joint issues following up uh, on that. So, um, usually one of the things I'll, I'll, be, I'll be looking at, I'm, I'm looking at AP logs oftentimes give us very helpful information as well as the AP join stats on the controller give us very helpful information. So, in the AP join stats, if you don't see your AP on the list in the AP join stats, that means that the controller has never received a discovery request from that AP in question. So that's one way to know, okay, has my AP at least got a discovery request up to the controller? If the answer is no, then absolutely. We definitely need to troubleshoot the discovery process. But if we do see an entry in there, we can click into it and see, okay, did the controller send back a discovery response? If so, discovery should be good. Now we would then focus in on troubleshooting joins. Um, the other thing that we would uh, be able to look for in terms of did, is the AP attempting, or did it discover the controller, is just look at the logs of an AP. So for instance, uh, here's an AP that is actually coming out of a reboot. Actually, it, it did join up. So let's, let's just scroll back through the logs. Okay, let's go to where it finds its IP address. Okay, so it pulled its IP address. Again, that's the first step. Now it's gonna do all the discovery processes. We're going to see logs for you know some discovery related things, you know translating controller uh, the the DNS name uh, option 43. But right here on an iOS based AP, meaning our 3700s in the lab, as opposed to our 1800 series APs, this is the first log to say okay we're we're about to start trying to join a controller, and then the next log should be the DTLS log. And this is going to have an IP address. And so right here, this shows us that this AP has started the process of trying to join to 10.0.4.11. Hence, we can assume it has discovered 10.0.4.11. So if you, do, if you never see this DTLS connection request sent to whatever IP address, you know it hasn't discovered it. If you see it, 
we can assume discovery. If it's trying to join a controller that you didn't anticipate it trying to join, we don't know yet if it's discovered the controller that you wanted it to join. Maybe it did, maybe it didn't. Um, but again, we can, we can validate, at least uh, on the controller side, again, against those AP join stats. So that would be under monitor, statistics, AP join. Is it on the list here? If the answer is yes, click into it. And what we want to see is that, well, we will see request received. If it's on the list, the, the question is, do we send responses back? If the answer is no, there's usually only one uh, ex explanation for that, but we'll talk about that later. Um, but if we send it back, we have to assume, for the most part, that the AP should have discovered the controller. And again, then we would focus on troubleshooting join. So sort that out first, because that can drastically reduce the amount of things that you need to care about as we troubleshoot. Okay, so if we have determined, you know what, it, it hasn't discovered the controller that we want to discover yet, now we need to validate and troubleshoot those discovery mechanisms. Now in the lab we have a number of possible discovery mechanisms, um, now, and there's, uh, there's ones that are definitely more, more used, um, but we'll, we'll talk about them on how to validate them. So that first discovery method, uh, broadcast on the V4 side or multicast on the V6 side, uh, really, this normally just requires the AP to be on the same VLAN as the management VLAN of the controller. Now, uh, for the broadcast method, we do have the IP helper trick. Uh, it unfortunately does not work on our 3650s due to a bug in the, in the 3.6 code that we're running in the lab. I believe it does work on a 4500, so if you're trying to get um, the broadcast method to work using the IP helper trick, um, you just need to make sure that you configure the IP helper trick appropriately. So again, we're, we're assuming that we didn't see discovery request received, and so we didn't get it to the controller. So let's show you the, the, the two lines of config that we would need for that. Um, so let's, let's pretend that this is a, a 4500 series AP. So we would say IP forward protocol UDP 5246, cap WAP port. And then we would go to the SVI that the AP lives on. So if my AP was on, say, VLAN 108, IP helper address and the management IP address of our controller. Now any broadcasts uh, for UDP 5246 will be leveraged through the IP helper command. The IP helper command will then forward it on to the controller. If we need to discover multiple controllers using this method, we just add IP helper commands uh, one for each management IP address. And always remember, we're, we're, we, 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 get, we need to get that discovery request to the management IP address. That's where we're sending the discovery. But, um, so that's, that, that would be the broadcast method if that does happen to show up. Again, it's only going to work on our 4500s, that IP helper trick. And joining our 5500s, it is almost never the case that our APs are on the same VLAN as our controllers. And so uh, we don't use it unaided. It, it always has to be in context of the IP helper command. All right, next method is DNS. So it's trying to resolve cisco-capwap-controller.domain, whatever the local domain is. And then it's going to send that uh, you know, DNS resolution up to a DNS server. The DNS server, if it has a DNS entry, will respond back with one or more IP addresses. Pretty basic. So uh, the only way that this is going to break is if our AP can't resolve DNS. So the, the DNS server in this case would be 100% pre-configured. There's, there's no expectation that you would need to add a DNS entry. There's no expectation that you would need to fix a DNS entry. So that's all taken care of. So our responsibility is that our AP knows about the DNS server and knows the proper DNS suffix. And if that's the case, and as long as there's layer three connectivity, it should be able to resolve. So my test here is I try to ping cisco-capwap-controller from the AP. Now we can look at logs to see did something resolve, and in this case, you know, it would look something like this. So this is all very good. This is what we want to see when we are using this method. So we see that we've we have a, d a DNS domain suffix appended to the end of cisco-capwap-controller. If we didn't have the suffix, I would know. Okay, I need to f update my DHCP scope, add the DNS suffix. We have also learned the IP address of a DNS server. If this was all 255s, I would know, okay, go into the DHCP scope for this AP, add a DNS server. And then uh, the okay means that it there was actually a response received 
from this resolution. The only thing we don't know is what was that response. You know, so if we ever need to try to figure out, okay, what IP address are we actually learning when we resolve this? Well, uh, that's why I do the ping test. So while the log is helpful, and definitely it points out any wrong configurations that we might have or missing configurations, it doesn't tell us what IP address that we learned. So usually, if I can type a password right. There we go. If I just ping cisco dash capwap dash controller, don't put a suffix on, let it do its own suffix. We should see that it's able to resolve and that it pings, and then now I know here's the IP address that it actually resolved to. Now the interesting thing with, uh, with DNS is I can send a DNS lookup to uh, the IPv4 address of a DNS server and receive an IPv6 IP address in response, and vice versa. I could send a, a DNS lookup to uh, the IPv6 address of a DNS server and receive an IPv4 address in response. So. Um, it does, it'll do both, you know, so if, if we learn, you know, v4 DNS server information and v6 DNS server information, it'll result, you know, it'll reach out to both. The only question is, okay, well, what's the response going to be? Is it going to be a v4 response or a v6 response? Um, you know, one's not necessarily right or wrong, it's just uh, as long as we can talk to the controller via the IP address given, we should be able to discover it. So, that's how we validate uh, DNS. And as long as we, you know, we have this, we should be pretty confident that, you know, it's going to send it a discovery request, should get a discovery response. All right, DHCP option 43 and or option 60, these are our, our V4 DHCP options. Uh, the one that we really use is option 43. Again, um, we're never expected to configure anything on the Windows 2012 server, and that's the only server that can configure option 60 correctly in according to what we have available to us. Our switches, as far as I can tell, cannot. I've never been able to make it work and it's almost impossible to find a document that tries to claim that it works and the one that I found doesn't work. So um, option 43 is really all that we would ever be responsible for ourselves configuring. So that's the only one that we should really ever have to troubleshoot. So we'll focus on troubleshooting option 43, but validating them is, is the same either way. So. Um, Number one, we just look at the AP logs. Do we have any logs for option 43? And if so, do we have the appropriate number of IPs learned? And are the IPs correct? If not, we go and we fix our option 43 string. So again, looking back at these, uh, auth log or these logs here on the AP, it's usually right after the translating Cisco CapWap controller log is where we would see the option 43 logs if we get any. So in this case, I got one option 43 log, so I learned one IP address, and the IP address I learned is 10.0.4.11. If there's anything wrong here, like, oh, I should have been learning two IP addresses, or that's not the right IP address, then we just need to know, okay, we go to the DHCP pool, we fix the string, and then move along with our business. So, but, but the fact that I learned anything means that at least option 43 has, has been at least, you know, somewhat configured. If I don't see any lines, then either option 43 is not added at all, or it's like so insanely mangled that it has no idea what the heck uh, it's talking about. But again, uh, we just need to go to the DHCP pool, do show run section DHCP, and we would either add or fix the option 43 statement. So you just need to know how to format that option 43 hex string. Uh, I talk about that in video series one. I'm not going to rehash that here. Uh, hopefully you know how to do that by this point in your studies. Okay. Um, if we're doing v uh, DHCP v6 option 52, uh, if you really wanted to, to validate that, you have to do a debug. Thing is, again, this, is, this would have to be configured on the Windows 2012 server. There should be no expectation of troubleshooting that one. Okay, primary, secondary, tertiary, we might be asked to, on a per AP basis, configure a primary, secondary. We really don't do tertiaries because we don't have that many controllers. Um, and so you just need to verify, okay, are, are the controllers properly added to the AP? Show cap web client config is, is our command for that. So let's see if LAP1 has one. Show cap web client config. Show, there we go. And in this case, I actually do. I have a primary. So this, uh, these MOR names, MOR IP addresses, are the 
uh, primary, secondary, tertiary controllers in order there. You also want to make sure that the appropriate IP address and the appropriate system name are in there. If that's the case, we'll send it a discovery request, you get a discovery response, and life should be good. If anything's missing, if anything's wrong, you would do um, cap wap, sorry, cap wap ap primary base wc1 10.04.11 cap wap ap secondary base and so on tertiary base would be the last one if you ever got into that which we don't so that's a pretty easy one and again as long as we have layer 3 connectivity the discovery request should get there response should come back the final discovery method that we have is usually not something that we, we troubleshoot, although it can cause us to join controllers that maybe we didn't anticipate joining, and that's the last known controller list. The thing here is that uh, you know, we don't have this until we've already joined up to a controller, so usually what you're troubleshooting is um, at the beginning of the lab trying to get those AP join, APs joined for the first time. And if that's the case, well, you know, we don't really have a last known controller list because we've never joined. Now, what about if... Um, Let's say that we wanted to discover and join controller one, but our AP somehow learned about controller two and is, is joining controller two. Um, and now we, maybe we fix the discovery process that was making it not learn about controller one. So it is learning about controller one, but it has controller two in its last known controllers list. And controller two seems to be more preferred for whatever reason. So it still keeps going to controller two, even though it is now discovering controller one. In that case, um, we can clear the CapWAP private config to forget about that list so that the next time it comes up, it, it doesn't know about controller two and it should ho hopefully only learn about and join controller one. But we can see this in show CapWAP client config. Show CapWAP client config, same con command that we did for the primary secondary. But if you keep on going uh, down, we look at for this configured switch list. This is uh, the list that you would see on an AP for its last known controllers, and so it will send these controllers discovery requests. If you need to get rid of that, it would just be a, a clear cap wap private config, enter, uh, reboot, and then it should come back up. It won't have known that. Just be aware that this will you know, wipe out um, you know, this configuration as well, and so um, if you had this configuration, that this shouldn't have been a problem to begin with, but um, just know that it does wipe that out. So those are all of our different uh, methods of discovery, how to validate if those methods of discovery are actually working, and then you should be able to figure out how to fix whatever config issue was, uh, was making things wrong or, or add whatever you need to add. So. At this point, we should be able to realize, okay, yes, discovery is working. And again, if, if these discovery methods are configured, but you're still not learning the, the, the controller, you're not seeing your, your AP attempting to join the controller, maybe there's a, a layer three issue, you know, where we, yeah, we, we know where to send the request, but the request can't get there or the request can't get back. So if, if, if we know the methods are good, but we still don't see our AP trying to join, you know, look for ACLs on the network, um, on the wired network that probably is. Look for, you know, routing issues, default gateways, you know, anything that would explain why we're not, you know, getting that information back from the controller or getting it to the controller. So, at this point, we, we complete the discovery phase. And again, um, you know, we, we use all the methods. We might get multiple responses back, we might get one response back, but um, whatever list of responses we get, we're gonna put it in an ordered list and then try to join the most preferred controller first. If that doesn't work, we work our way down the list. Now, what if we see, um, one of the next problems that we might run into is that our, our AP is not trying to join the controller that we want it to join, it's trying to join some other controller. And so it's either going to be because we didn't discover the controller that we wanted to discover or that these other controllers are just more preferred. And so again, we, we, we already looked at uh, validating discovery, so we, we should be able to sort of sort that out. And then um, make sure that the, in the AP join stats, you can vet out, did the, the, did the controller send a discovery response back? If not, usually the, the reason for that is that there's no AP manager interface on the controller. So make sure it to send a discovery response back. And then we want to check just the, the preference processes here. So if you, 
if you're supposed to discover more than one controller, but prefer to join one over the other, that one that we prefer either has to be a primary, secondary, tertiary, a per AP primary, secondary, tertiary, or it has to be a master controller. There really is no other deterministic way for us to control which controller to join, because we can never really control how many APs are on each controller at any given moment. That's the last method. So it's a simple verification of, um, you know, is the controller configured as a primary, secondary, tertiary in the AP? Maybe, I don't know if they, they would do this, but maybe they pre-configured a primary, secondary, tertiary controller on your AP, so you, you didn't really think to look there because you didn't con configure it, but it's already there. So show cap web client config would validate if there's a primary, secondary, tertiary. But outside of that, um, look to see if the controller in question that's, you know, bringing your, your AP over to it as opposed to the, the controller you want it to join. See if that other controller is a master controller. And we can see this in the CLI. We can see it in the GUI. In the GUI, it's under controller, advanced, master controller mode. If that box is checked, it's a master controller and it's gonna wanna suck all the APs over to it. In the CLI, it would be under a show network summary. believe, but it's sort of buried. Um, Cisco AP default master is, is the, the output there. So if it is, you just, and it, and it should not be a master controller, you turn it off. If it needs to be a master controller, but you still need to join to a different controller, you either need to not discover that controller or you need to configure the preferred controller to be a primary, secondary, tertiary on your AP. Those are really the only options available to us.